Welcome to MAT 2LB booklet number one, rounding and converting, lesson number six, place value and rounding with money continued. So this is a continuation of the work we were doing in the last lesson where we're starting to use our rounding now um, in the context of money and specifically with respect to being able to keep track and estimate our purchases before we get to a final tally, which can be embarrassing if we end up getting too many things and not having enough money to pay for it. This is a quick way to make sure it save you a little bit of embarrassment if you uh, buy too many things and then don't have enough money to cover it. Let's start with example number one. The table below lists the items Melissa put into her basket. Round each price to the nearest dollar. So we've got canned peaches, frozen dinner, bag of oranges, broccoli, juice boxes, apple juice. Let's start together with canned peaches. So we have $1.97. Again, we're being asked to round to the nearest dollar, so that's going to be there, there, there. Again, hopefully we're starting to get a little more fluid at this, it's starting to come a little more easily. We're going to be looking to all of the numbers after the place value that we intend to round. So the price rounded to the nearest dollar. The 9 rounds our $1 up to $2. The 9 rounds our $3 up to $4. The 3 does not round our $2 up, so it stays the same. The 7 rounds our 0 up to a $1. The 1 does not round the first 1 up, so we stay at $1. And the 9 after the 2 rounds that up to 3. So at this point, we have rounded all 6 of Melissa's uh, items to the nearest dollar. Let's quickly do some adding here to see if we, um, if Melissa's going to have enough. The next part of the question reads, Melissa discovers she only has $14. Based on her rounding, will she have enough money for all the items in her basket? So if we were to add these up, and I'm going to show you a technique now. It's called just um, summing in total as you move through. So we're just going to add each one up as it comes along. So I'm going to start with two. I'm going to add four to it. Oops. going to add four to it. That's going to give me six. Add another 2 to it, that's going to give me 8. Add another 1 will give me 9. Another 1 will give me 10. And adding 3 to it will give me approximately $13. Again, this is just an estimation. It's just to help Melissa get an, a gauge um, as to the approximate value of the goods she's put into her basket. So Melissa has discovered she only has $14. Will she have enough money for the items in her basket? The answer, of course, is yes. She has approximately $13 in her basket. So Melissa need not worry. She will have enough money if she doesn't put anything else in. Let's look at example number two. You have the following coins in your pocket, and we are going to complete the interaction with the cashier for three particular items purchased. And if we look a little bit farther down the table, we'll see one of them is a carton of juice, another one is a box of crackers, another one, a loaf of bread. So let's quickly tally up how much you have in your pocket. Again, we'll apply that same technique. Let's write down the value of each of these coins really quickly here. So this is going to be $2. This is a loony for a dollar, another dollar. We have two quarters here. Each of those will be 25 cents. Oops, that five is messy. 25 cents, 25 cents. We have dimes are each worth 10 cents. And hiding up at the top, we have one nickel, which is worth $0.05. So let's get you to add those up. Once you've got them added up, click back, and we'll see how you did. OK, so we've quickly added these up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2 quarters is 50 cents, 60, 70, 85 cents. So we have $4 equals $4 and 85 cents. So that's how much we actually have. Let's look at these interactions. The first one is for a, car a carton of juice, which is $1.45. Now the goal when you are exchanging money for goods is to 
provide the smallest number or the closest value to the one that's being asked of you. So for a dollar and 45 cents, we want to see if we can actually provide our cashier with exactly one dollar and 45 cents. So let's have a look at the money we actually have. We've got a loonie. That's a good place to start. So the coins you give the cashier, it's going to be, actually let's write that. Let's use our words. So we'll call this one a loonie. Definitely going to give a loonie. That has a value of a dollar. And can we get to 45 cents with the money that we're given back? So another quarter, a quarter will give us, will give us 25 cents. And that leaves us with another 20 cents to bring in, which is going to be two dimes. Two dimes will give us 20 cents. That is our $1.45. So the amount that you actually give the cashier is $1.45. And the change you get back is none. Because you were able to give the cashier an exact value. So this is the mechanism that we're looking at here. We'll do box of crackers together, and then we'll see if you guys can tackle a loaf of bread on your own. So box of crackers comes up to two dollars and sixty cents so we want to try to get that exact value if we can so let's start with one toonie that was a great place to start since a toonie is worth two dollars and then we're trying to get to sixty cents so it's a quick way to get up to fifty cents it's two quarters two quarters will give us fifty cents that brings us to 250 we need 10 more cents, which is one dime. One dime will give us 10 cents. That's going to give us $2.60 that we give to our cashier. And again, we have no change back because we were able to get the exact amount. So you guys try loaf of bread on your own. See how you do. When you think you've got it, click back and then we'll do that one together. Okay. So you've tried loaf of bread on your own. Let's have a look at it. We're shooting for 90 cents. Now, toonies and loonies are off the table already, possibly, because that's too much. With the change that's lower than toonies and loonies, will we actually have enough money to get there, is what I'm asking myself. So let's have a look at the change that's not toonies and loonies. So we have two quarters, which is 50 cents, 60, 70, 85. So we have 85 cents only. Unfortunately, we don't actually have enough exact change to do it. So this is an occasion where we're going to need to provide some change, or the cashier will need to provide change. As close as we can get to 90 cents is actually one loonie. One loonie, which is one dollar. The amount that we give to the cashier, of course, is one dollar. And the amount of change that we'll receive back from the cashier, from one dollar, the difference between one dollar and 90 cents is 10, 10 cents or one dime, which would be our change back. So your worksheet is very much like the examples we did here in the lesson. Have a look back if you're not 100% sure if you've got it under control. If you've got it under control and are feeling confident, give the worksheet a try. After that, I'll see you in lesson number seven.